Hey, greetings, greetings. I'm back again. And tonight I'm doing a video about William Mongolo Cobbs. So William Mongolo Cobbs was an anthropologist, a physical anthropologist at that. And he was one of the first African-American to receive a PhD in anthropology. And also there is an institution named after him, which is called the, um, the Cobb Institute. And there's also a research lab called the Cobb Research Lab, right? So, yes, he had done tremendous work as an anthropologist. And not only he had done tremendous work, but he has been able to allow opportunity to become available to other African-Americans or other minority groups to get involved into the anthropology field of study. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show some information about Mr. William Mogulu Cobb. All right, so right here. Who is a uh, William Mogulu Cobb? So William Mongolu Cobb was a board certified physician and a physical anthropologist. As the first African-American PhD in anthropology and the only one until after the Korean War, his main focus in the anthropological discipline was studying the idea of race and its negative impact on communities of color. His career, both as a physician and a professor at Howard University was dedicated to the advancement of African-American researchers. He was heavily involved in civil rights activism. Cobb wrote prolifically and contr contributed both popular and scholarly articles during the course of his career. His work has been noted as a significant contribution to the development of subdiscipline of biocultural anthropology during the first half of the 20th century. Cobb was also an accomplished educator and taught over 5,000 students in the social and health science during his lifetime. All right, so this is a picture of Mr. Cobb. As you can see, that looks like a skeleton. I'm not sure what that is, but you know, he dealing with that. Yeah, that is a skeleton. Okay, a skull. He dealing with the anthropological work. All right. So let's go down to his early life and personal life. So Mr. Kyle was born on October the 12th of 1904 in Washington, DC. His mother, Alazine Mangalu Cobb grew up in Massachusetts and is partly of Native American descent. His father, William Emmer Cobb, grew up in Selma, Alabama. His parents met in Washington, D.C. when his father started his own print business for the black community. The tipping point for Cobb's initial interest in anthropology came from a book of the animal kingdom that his grandfather owned. In this book, there were illustrations of human beings separated by race, but were illustrated but were illustrated with what Cobb called equal dignity. This led to an interest in the concept of race as the same type of equal dignity was not granted in the society that surrounded Cobb's life. Cobb attended Dunbar High School, a highly esteemed Washington, D.C. African-American high school in 1917. He was a successful student and athlete and went on to win championships in cross country as well as lightweight and weatherweight boxing during his high school and collegiate years. He married Hilda B. Smith, Ruth Smith Lloyd's sister, and they had two children. Cobb died of pneumonia on November the 20th of 1990 at the age of 86. And his education says, following his graduation from Dunbar High School in 1921, Cobb earned his Bachelor's of Arts from Amherst College in 1925. Following completion of his uh, baccalaureate degree, he received a obligate scholarship for proficiency in biology, which allowed him to pursue research in embryology, that's study of the embryo, 
study of the, you know, the beginning stage of human life at Woods Hole Marine Biology Laboratory. He earned his MD, Doctor of Medicine, in 1929 from the Howard University Medical School. He worked jobs throughout his time in medical school. Cobb then accepted a position at Howard University, which he was offered prior to his graduation. Newman P.G. Adams, was who was the dean of Howard University at the time, was assigned the task of organizing a new faculty of African-American physicians to help advance the school in the medical field. Cobb, in turn, had a aspirations of creating a laboratory of uh, anatomy and physical anthropology at Howard University that would have the resources for African-American scholars to contribute to debates in race, racial biology. As, as a part of Dean Adams' effort, Cobb was sent to study under biological anthropologist T. Wingate T Todd at Case Western, yeah, Case Western Reserve University. Cobb's dissertation work was as expansive survey of the Hamen Todd skeletal with yeah, women, yeah, Hamatide Skeletal Collection, a large skeletal population now housed at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, which is associated with Case Western Reserve University. He earned his PhD in anthropology in 1932, and his dissertation was published under the title Human Archives the following year. Okay. His career, following the conferral of his doctorate, Cobb remained at Case Western, Uni Case Western Reserve University as a fellow, where he continued work on the Hannon Todd collection with a focus on Cornell Center closure. His 1940 publication, Cornell Facial Union in Man, produced as a result of this work, established his expertise as a functional uh, anatomist and is one of his most widely cited works to date. During this period, Cobb also worked with physical anthropologist Alice, uh, yeah, Alice, I'm, I don't know how to say that last name, on a survey on the skeletal collection at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. He returned to the Howard University Medical School in 1930, where he taught for the majority of his career and established the W. Mangala Cobb Skeletal Collection. He became the university's first distinguished professor in 1969 and became professor emeritus in 1973. In addition to his work at Howard, Cobb also taught at Stanford University, the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, the University of Washington, the University of Maryland, West Virginia University, Harvard Medical School, the Medical College of West Wisconsin at Milwaukee and the Catholic University of America during his lifetime. Cobb was heavily involved with a number of anthropological and medical organizations during his career. He was an active member of American Association of Physical Anthropologists since its second meeting in 1930 and served on its board on multiple occasions, both as its vice president from 1940 to 50 and from 1954 to 1956 and president from 1957 to 1959. He also held leadership roles in the Anthropological Society of Washington, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Eugenicist Society, and the Medical uh, Charuk Charuk uh, Society of the District of Columbia. He also served as chairman on the Council of Medical Education and Hospital for two terms from 1948 to 1963. Throughout his lifetime, Cobb pursued work aimed at furthering the opportunities of African American both within society in general and within the health sciences. He was an active member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and served as its president from 1976 to 1982. He created the MHOTEP conferences on hospital integration in 1957 as part of the NAACP, an annual conference seeking to end hospital and medical school segregation that continued until 1964. He was an active member of 
National Medical Association, an organization dedicated to the advancement of African American physician and other health professionals. He was a longtime contributor to his journal, the Journal of the Medical, yeah, the Journal of National Medical Association, of which he served as editor from 1944 to his death in 1990. He also served as the organization president from 1964 to 1965. In addition to his involvement in both African American and European American led professional organization and journals, Cobb was active in the community outreach through work on race and health published in popular African-American magazines such as Negro Digest, Pittsburgh Courier, and Ebony. All right. So also under scholarship, um, let's see, throughout his career, Cobb applied his technical expertise in foundational, I mean, functional anatomy and medicine to a variety of topics, including the issue of African-American health, child development, and disproving scientific justification for racism. His approach has been characterized as a form of applied anthropology and activist scholarship. His work explicitly critiqued hierarchical understandings of human variation, and he often subverted racist evolutionary arguments through highlighting the resiliency of African Americans. He took as an example the experience of the transatlantic slave trade, which he argued acted as a selective pressure and would have led to a genetically stronger population relative to European Americans who did not experience this population bottleneck. All right. So and then go on to say that um, I'm going to read this first paragraph right here. It says Cobb often used his expertise in anatomy and biology in order to combat racist explanation for perceived differences between African-Americans and European-Americans. One of the most widely cited studies in this effort was Cobb Race, Race and Runners, published in 1936. In this work, Cobb took the case of Jesse Owen to dispel the idea that his success as a quadruple gold medal winner could be explained by his African-American genes and an argument that stemmed from the idea that Black people were stronger and more athletic than whites at the cost of decreased intelligence. And proponents of this idea often pointed to the supposed existence of extra musculature or differences in nerve thickness that allow African Americans athletes to excel relative to European Americans. And he addressed this question by surveying the entomological characteristic of ons as well as other proponent African Americans in different sports. And then it goes on to say during the latter years of his career, Cobb took a more philosophical approach to his anatomical perspective of humanity. He often used biological metaphors to point to key issues within society. Cobb's most prominent philosophical contribution was arguably his 1975 publication, An Anatomist View of Human Relation, Homo, sangu homo Sanguinis versus homo sapiens, mankind's pre present, dile present dilemma. This work focused primarily on the fundamental conflict in human nature he described as being the civilized people suggest by our binomial digest, di I mean, excuse me, binomial uh, design nation, human sapien, I mean, homo sapien, man the wise and the much older and violent organism he described via his coin term homo cyganeus man the bloody cobb described the recent adaptation of civilization and ethics as similar to recently involved anatomological anatomical traits like bipedalism a, hum, a key human trait which has nonetheless resulted in a host of health conditions due to our lineages adaptation <clears throat> for quadruple quadrupedal loc, locomotion 
Cobb argued that man, the wise, is up against the ancient evolutionary tradition of man as a bloody preparatory pre primate or primate, and that this history of violence and hatred would thus be difficult to overcome. Cobb's final presentation, I mean, yeah, final pres present publication in 1988, Human Variation, informing the public, applied his homo sanguinis more closely to the rapid cultural change of the late 20th century. Cobb saw this period of rapid development as both a key opportunity for continued progress against racism and other forms of inequality and a potential for such issues to become more firmly embedded within the system of society. Just as a embryological defect cannot be corrected, so our mammoth construction programs can be wrong, which is not obvious until it is too late. Well, that's the way to combat against racism. That's deep. So, um, goes on to say about his legacy. Uh, Cobb distinguished himself by representing the pursuit of social responsibility in the field of anthropology, as well as by being activist scholar who often apply often apply anthropological methods to issues of racism and inequality. Okay. He said he believed that scholars must take responsibility not only for their own thoughts and action, but also for their own society, because the values that are expressed in scientific work, whether subtly or overly, are key in the shaping of culture and society. He was one of the first anthrop anthropologists to undertake a demographic analysis that illustrate the consequences of segregation and racism on the African-American population. And he wanted to create the resources so he would not be the last. One of Cobb's greatest contribution to the end is the expansive skeletal collection he curated during this time at Howard University, which is now housed at, you know, at the university's W. Mongolu Cobb Research Laboratory, a research laboratory led by biological anthropologist Fatima Jackson that also houses the New York African Burial Ground Collection. He was long involved in African descendant struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. He assumed a number of roles in African-American led organization, including the National Urban League and the Association of the Study of Negro Life and History. And he was a longtime editor of the first African American medical journal. Okay. All right. So, Kyle played a key role in effect to expand access to medical care through his active leadership in the National Medical Association. And this activism led to his testimony to Congress during the hearings leading up to the passage of Medicare and Medicaid in 1965. He was present at the signing of the, this bill into law by invitation of President Linda B. Johnson. <clears throat> During his lifetime, Cobb was honored by more than 100 organizations for his efforts as a scholar and as an activist, including, including the American Association of Anatomy Highest Award, the Henry Gray Award, which he received for his outstanding contribution in the field in 1980. He was also the recipient of the U.S. Navy Distinguished Public Service Award and received honorary doctorates from several institutions, including the Medical College of Wisconsin, Georgetown University, the University of Witwatersrand, or Waters, Watersrand, whatever, uh, Michigan, Morgan State University, Howard University, and Amherst College. <clears throat> so these are the selected publications. As you can see, the Human Archives, which came out in 1932, Race and Runners, 1936. All right, the uh, anatomic view of human relation, humans' right, a new fight in cultural evolution, the Black American in medicine, human variation informing the public. In addition to those listed above, Cobb had more than one, more than eleven hundred publications on various topics. 
So here's the references. Okay. At the bottom and further reading. African American pioneers in anthropology, which came out in 1998 and also Bones Rooms from Scientific Racism to Human Prehistory in Museum, Cambridge at Harvard University Press night in 2016. Then you got the links at the bottom. All right. So that's all the information. Um, So I want to just go ahead and show one of the websites. <clears throat> All right, so this is the website right here, which is cobinstitute.org, okay? So W Mangalu Cobb NMA Health Institute. All right. So this is the website, and right here it says um, the W Mangalu Cobb slash National Medical Association Health Institute is a uh, Nonprofit, so when anytime you see 501c, that means it's nonprofit in Washington, D.C., function as a national uh, consortium of scholars that engages in innovative research and knowledge uh, di dissemination for the, the reduction and elimination of racial and eth ethnic health disparities and racism in medicine, solving one of our society. I mean, yeah, one of our society's most pressing problems, racial inequality in health, requires the collabor collaborative work of public agencies, private entities, academic medical centers, and equally important communities. Founded in 2004, the Institute is named in the honor of the late William Mungaloo Cobb, physician anthropologist and a distinguished professor of medicine and anatomy. Dr. Cobb influenced countless graduates of Howard, I mean, Howard, yeah, Howard University School of Medicine, including Randall C. Morgan Jr., who is an orthopedic surgeon and founding executive director of the Cobb Institute. All right. So, with that being said, that's all the information about that black anthropologist. And there will be more to come because, again, we have to give exposure and light to our brother and sister who are in the STEM field and who are doing the work, especially in genetics, anthropology, and biology, etc. Because it's time that we start looking into these individuals, especially when it comes to information dealing with science and history and African Americans and African descended people and just humanity as a whole. So I'm going to continue to do these video about the African diasporic people in America. Okay. We're going to talk about the African diaspora. I mean, not in America, excuse me, the African diaspora people in anthropology or just in the STEM. So <clears throat> Just be on the lookout for that. Again, the African diasporic people in anthropology. All right. So until next time, I hope everybody be safe and be good. Until then, I'll reconnect with you guys later. So if you guys get a chance to watch this video, make sure you share the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell whenever I come on. And again, thank you all that has been subscribing, that has been tuning in, being very supportive. I appreciate it. It really means a lot. Until then, y'all take it easy. Peace.